Okay, guys. So, we're going to do an interesting experiment today. We're going to test a headlight bulb that we made and measure the current output and show how much of a difference a meter amp rating is compared to using an oscilloscope. So, I have a trailer battery right here. I got the power running over through an amp clamp, which just measures current inductively. And that's on the picoscope, and then it comes here. And then the blue lead is measuring voltage on the picoscope. And uh, if you don't know what a picoscope is, it's just a very, very fast, pretty much meter. Like you can measure voltage changes very, very fast and accurately. And then this black lead comes into my multimeter right here and then here's the output and then our ground lead just goes back to the battery so we're gonna take our headlight bulb that we did the other day and we're gonna hook this up to the ground right here and then we'll do the blue one this so this is high and I got the picoscope set up And I got a trigger on the green trace, which the green trace is our current, the blue trace is our voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this up and we'll compare the meter to the picoscope. Now watch the meter first because the meter is going to change, I'm going to say quickly, but like... Uh, it's not going to read, like the meter itself can't read as fast as the picoscope. So we're going to look at this because I can't save this. There's no min or max on it. So when we connect this up, we saw 5.4 amps. Now, if we look at the picoscope, which we zoom in on here, right here. So this headlight bulb pulled 20 amps. It maxed out my amp clamp, turning it on. And we didn't see that on the multimeter. We saw f just over 5 amps. So that's a huge difference. That's four times more current that this headlight bulb pulled when cold. And you can see as it warmed up, it uh, leveled off down here at around 4.457 amps. So four and a half amps. So what we'll do is we'll do this test again. So here we go. Look at our meter. So 7.8 was the highest that I saw right there. And you see it's showing like 5 amps right now. Oh, I think I lost it. And let me make sure this clamp's here. That's another thing you gotta do is you gotta zero your clamps because I think this might be slightly off. It was slightly off. So we'll connect this back up. We'll do it again. Let's see. Reset. There we go. 5.7 was what I saw. And we're at 5 amps right now. So we'll move this up. See what our amperage was at. Yeah, pretty much five amps, 4.91. And then the max we saw, our inrush current was 20 amps. So it might be because we're maxing out our scaling. We can go to a higher scale. Let's go to a 50 amp scale. Do this one more time. Eight amps is what I saw there. Yeah, so it looks like 20 amps is actually the max that 
this will pull by itself. So we can do the we can do the low beam part of it because this is a nine zero zero seven bulb. So it has two filaments in it. Let's see. Start recording. Here we go. So I saw seven point something there. It's like seven and a half amps. Pulled like 18, 18 and a half amps there. So this is why it's important because if you're testing a circuit on a car to simulate a load with this and you don't realize that it's going to pull four times its current, you could fry something or melt, start melting wires, something. So now we're going to do a 3157 bulb. Let's go back. Set this up. So we'll connect our ground up here. Let's see, where's our power wire? So here's our power wire. So this one should be around like 2.2 .2 amps. So we connect this up. And there we go. I didn't get to see what the meter showed. So let's zoom in on this. What do we see here? So 17 amps. And you can also see that every time current goes up, voltage will drop. You can see how this curve mi mimics this curve. Like if, we, if we multiply this current, like the scaling, you'll see. See how this starts really mimicking it? Most people don't know that. Like you can watch current flow just by looking at the voltage side. So we'll do this test one more time. Now let's look at the meter. 2.21 was the max that I saw. And look at that, we were at 17 amps. Now we'll go down to, it should be a half an amp that this other one, the low side pulls, because this is a dual filament bulb. Uh, we might have to pull this down. Let's go right there. Let's try this. I saw a half an amp, that was it. How much did that pull? Oops. Look at that, four amps. So that's eight times what it's running voltage is at. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try two headlights together and see what they end up pulling. So we're going to change this over to 60 amp. We'll switch our amp clamp over. Zero this, and we'll go up to like a 50 amp scale. So we'll take two headlight bulbs. We'll connect both the highs together. So that should be around like 10 and a half amps. And hopefully my meter won't blow because it has a 20 amp fuse in it. So here we go. So it did say overload, so it went over 20 amps, but right now we're at 10. Look at that, we pulled. Oh, oops, brought down the wrong one. Let's move this one up. 43, 44 amps. 44 amps connecting these up. 
and then once they warm up let's see how long it takes for them to warm up So it takes a half a sec, just under a half a second for these to warm up and pull less current. Let's see, nine. Let's go to 20 amps. Yeah, so for 53 milliseconds, it's still pulling double the amount of current. So you can really fry stuff on, like if it's electronically controlled, you could fry a driver or something, or uh, cause like a module to reset on something by just doing a load like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch back, and we're going to try a normal test light, a normal incandescent test light. Let's see, we'll do like a 5 amp scale. There we go. Oh, where did I put my computers? Here we go. So we have this uh, Craftsman incandescent test light connector ground up so we got our ground we'll connect it here and then we'll clamp the end of this with our alligator clamp so here we go we'll look to see what this pulls so it's just like 1.5 uh, we might not have this low enough Let's give it a couple seconds to cool down. We'll try it again. There we go. So I saw 1.5. Still didn't register. Let's go lower. Oh, I have it upside down. One point six I saw. That's another thing. Amp clamps are directional. They usually have an arrow inside of them. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that or not, but there's an arrow in there that shows which way it goes. Points towards the power. Well towards the like power supply. So here we go. We pulled one amp. Look at that. 1.052 amps. So one amp. And it's showing 150 milliamps that entire time. So that's, what, seven times? Seven times this normal current. Let's try that again. It usually won't ruin anything on most cars but you have the chance of ruining something. We'll do it again. So I saw 1.8. Look at that, that pulled even more that time. We're at almost one and a half amps. Yeah, 1.4 amps I pulled to light the light bulb. And it's just your generic Craftsman incandescent test light. I think these are pretty similar to the Snap-on one. So I hope you guys like this. Maybe you learned something. I never really see people test their lights to see what kind of current they pull. Hopefully this helps somebody. See you guys later.